Yo, it's your boy Drew. I'm in the building with DOD. You already know the vibes. We here, we representing. Just killed the podcast. Yo, lately I've been gig working, quit serving. I want to be gargled. Trapping gave me top steeds. I want the top models on the pyramid of scheme. So it's easy to be followed. What's good, do over don't? Pepper World episode 32. And today we're here with one of our regulars, but he has not been on any of our content, even though we've been doing shit with him behind the scenes for like a year, year and a half. There's something now. Mr. Drew, what's going on? What's poppin' DOD family? I'm in the building. You know, great day, great time to be alive. What's going on? How you feeling? It was good, good, good. We had we had some off-camera combo that was good before. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always good to warm up. That's the exercise. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god. So do you go by Drew or Drew BC? Because I know you're into Um So like the thing about the Drew BC three, um, that's really for me, like I look at the game a lot different. Um, for me, it's like a username, you know what I'm saying? It's a way for people to identify with my music. It's just kind of like a, a moniker for people to, but really I'm myself. So Drew's fine. Drew's good. When you see me in the streets, Drew, everybody know Drew. So Drew's good. Okay. But What's Drew BC3 is definitely a way to find my music, find everything all together, my catalog and everything. What's the BC3 for? Um, so Band Canyon and then three. So it's like, I believe that I'm third in line. You know what I'm saying? First is God. Second is the people. My purpose, serving, you know, that. And um, third is myself. I come right after that. Because without those two things, it would be no me. You're a man of meaning, which I've known for a while. But straight off the bat with the pod. Uh, <laughs> Already with the deep-ass meanings, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Already with the deep-ass meanings. Honestly, I was going to ask other questions first, but I'm going to get right into that. How you feel about lyrics? Because you, you be lyrical as fuck, and everything that you make in the studio has extreme meanings behind it. Like, I forget what the song was, but there was some song you made. I think you dropped it, actually, about the girls. Um, but do you know what I'm talking about? Tear was here. Oh, it was day. a little Booties Matter joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How important do you think it is to have actual meaning behind the music? Because all of your songs are just packed with deep messages. Um, I think it's preference. I think it's just catering to your pocket, your fan base. Um. Lyrics are not always that important because not everyone identifies with words, right? right? The first thing people hear is the beat. Second thing people hear is the melody, and then everything goes from there. I think lyrics are important for me because it breaks down, for me as an individual, the point I'm trying to get across, right? So I'm trying to get a point across, and I'm trying to um, obviously be impactful while, you know, delivering that message. And for me, music is the easiest way to do that. It's the easiest way people understand it. But lyrics are not that important in today's times. I feel like everyone's like lyrics, 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 lyrics. And a lot of the people that um, are pro lyrics, their lyrics are not even good. So I just think that lyrics, when we get into that, it's subjective anyways. I just think it's really just about, um, you know, how impactful are you and delivering your message and what is your message? And who, who are your fans, honestly? Because there's different shit for everyone. How do you think people should go about getting fans in the first place? Um, I think you should know yourself first. I think um, you should find some of the best layers of you. Um, figure out when the best times those are. Write that down. Uh, figure out things you connect with during those times. Write that down. And figure out the best way to get that across, right? Because there's a time and place for everything. You're not going to listen to a sad song when, um, you know, you're, you're, you're in a very happy place. And you're not going to listen to... Um, an angry song when you're in a very happy place, right? There's, there's a time and place for everything. So I just think making sure um, that message that you deliver is executed right and it's executed right, you know, based on time, based on how you put it together, and then um, just striking, you know what I'm saying? Knowing your fan base, knowing yourself, and just striking with some of the best layers of you. Because, again, there's mad different sides of you you can expose. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not tough all the time, you know what I mean? There's times I have to be tough. That's what is required of me. There's times I have to be um, soft and caring, you know, with family, my nephew. You know what I'm saying? So I just think it's finding the best layers of you and just just rocking with that. And and even that's trial and error, right? That's that's time. You put out some content, see how people respond to it, and just keep going and keep going and keep going. But you have to know yourself, you know? So how important with you saying all that do you think it is just for people and artists in general to just be true to themselves? Like what do you what are your thoughts on all the people that you hear their music and you could literally straight up tell like yo that's cap that's cap. Well, I think in today's times what it is is that artists don't get to live long enough. I I think there's such a rush on being the young popping artist that nobody really really pays attention to how old Cardi B is, one of the most influential people to do it right now how old offset is right how old two chains is right some of the most impactful people 
or just curating the culture, right? Everyone just kind of pays attention to the new emerging artists that seem to go viral. But that's one sector of it, right? That's not always going to happen. And if you are banking on going viral, you're almost setting yourself up to fail. Okay. So, you know, one thing I was always taught is to have a plan, right? So if you have a plan and you execute, you're a lot more likely to succeed. Studying, educating yourself on what's going on. So I just think that um, artists don't get the chance to live and have a long-term game plan on how they can eat in a small pocket as opposed to just thinking that because you work with this videographer because this person works with it that is going to make you pop in a lyrical lemonade video might not make you pop in okay. if lyrical lemonade videos there's certain videos that do 50 million views you might get a lyrical lemonade video and only do 800 000 and it might not change your life you know what i mean so i just think that everyone pays attention to what everyone else is doing instead of saying you know what this is the best layer of me let me tap in on that. Let me invest in that and let me grow it, right? And then when you do get influenced by people who have different styles, collaborate. You don't got to take no one's style. You yeah. don't got to take it off of yourself, but look at it like sharing. You know, you share your special pocket of you with someone else and it could be beneficial for both parties involved. So I just think that everyone wants to morph into what they see and you don't have to do that. You can hold your ground with who you are if you're comfortable enough to do it. Uh, and I, this is going to be the best podcast to be on this channel. We're only five minutes in, and you're probably the most well-spoken person on here and very enthusiastic. Well, I think I think it also boils down to facts, too, right? Like, oh, um, You're spitting straight facts. That's why I said that. Music <laughs> is a business, right? Facts. It is. All right, and so when I ask most artists, I say, yo, you got something to sell. They don't have anything to sell. I, most artists that I encounter in today's times never sold anything. When Honestly. I first started doing music, I sold CDs, right? That was like, I came out in the CD era before it was SoundCloud, right? So SoundCloud was just emerging. These new technologies were just emerging. Being able to deliver music to fans at a fast time was just emerging. The distributors, like, uh, this is before DistroKid and all these people. TuneCore? It was just TuneCore. That was the only thing. That was the only way to get on iTunes. And that wasn't really like a big thing because people still had to pay for music. So the still, the grassroots way was to throw it on DatPiff get the promotion, if you got enough money, get on Worldstar. I was actually on Worldstar in the, really? early, yeah, in the early stages just to kind of see the impact of what it would do. At that time, you paid about $800. They'll put it up there. You'll get featured artists of the day. The sometimes hell? it works, sometimes it doesn't. And that was when I learned, like, paying to play doesn't always work because I could have took that same 800 through a private listening party bought liquor, bought whatever, whatever, paid some money for some merch and doubled up my money with the small fan base I had. You know what I mean? So paying to play doesn't always win. You know what I mean? But it was a good experience that I got early on to kind of let me know the process of doing things. I, even at that time, I was I had already trademarked my artist name. Like there's a lot of things that artists don't know. You could trademark your name. You can go right to Legal Zoom. You pay the fee. And, um, you know, there's going to be a legal Zoom fee and then there's going to be a second fee, which is the fee you pay with the USPTO, United States Patent and Trademark Office. I think, uh, don't quote me on it, somewhere around like 350 or something like that. You go trademark your name. And what you could do is, there's this is a way you could search it. You can go search it. You could search one of your favorite artists. You can find how they um, describe that they use their name. So, like, uh, mine's was like, performance uh, minds was like musical artists namely in the performance service or whatever something like that you can literally copy and paste jay-z's description and use it as yours if jay-z has it and it covers him and he tours the world then it should be enough to cover you it's right. class 41 class 41 trademark is how you trademark your artist name copyrights too you should copyright your lyrics how you were talking about how there's so many new ways like yeah. for music compared to back in the day there's all this new technology most of all, motherfuckers got Google, which right. literally you could learn anything. Right. Why do you think so many artists nowadays are just oblivious to like everything? Like the trademarking thing, you would think that's so simple. Like it's like with starting a business, people don't even know you got to start an LLC. But why do you think people are so oblivious to certain things when the information's literally at our fingertips right now? I mean, we got to start with what genre are we in? We're in hip hop, bro. We in rap. You know what I'm saying? That's been it's it's ignorant culture. We started off with something. There was pioneers of it. Like, we're going way back. So I would recommend for anyone wanting to get into music, like rap particularly, go read Russell Simmons, Def Jam, how he started Def Jam, one of the first rap record labels, like for this type of music, hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? You got a book? 
Um, do I have the book? No, does he have a book? Yeah, he has a he book. Does a, you know what I'm saying? I gotta read that shit. You gotta read That's it. The That's the I'm foundation. Reading. I read that in high school. You get what I'm That's saying? So I was already I'm ahead reading. of my peers. I already knew who found it, who 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 founded it, and 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 took it to a whole nother commercial level. What Rick Rubin and all of them. And we're at the time Rick Rubin was at NYU. So um, even that, bro, like you know, like um, even that, even that's a big thing. Like collaborating with people on the business side of things as well like when you are artists like having people in pocket that are kind of already going that path everybody wants to hire their homeboy from the block but your homeboy from the block is not taking strategic steps to be educated in the music industry he's never interned at sony he's never interned at atlantic he's never interned at capital to see what goes on in the office to see the different jobs to say okay us as an independent label we need to cover all these jobs to see a real budget. You get what I'm saying? So I just think that, um, you know, in this industry, we're delusional and there's just a culture around being delusional and everyone's okay with it. You know what I mean? Michael Jackson and and Prince, you know what I'm saying, are the kings of getting theirs. They got theirs. Prince owns his masters. Even now, they just, when didn't they just settle his estate? I think they, they just did. settled that. Sure you get did. what I'm I saying? Like, did. that's a big business. Big business. Big business, and I, I forgot what the tax bill was, but the tax bill was something crazy. Yeah. That's that's like something artists, rap artists, don't even see in their career span. You get what I'm saying? Because again, it's just a cultural thing in this field. But I feel like in other in other genres, it don't happen like that, bro. Yeah. I just think they get their respect where it's definitely due. doesn't. Yeah, definitely doesn't happen all the other times. Yeah, and it's just everyone's cool with it. Everyone's like, yo, we don't know, we don't know better, and we're just cool with it. I'm not. I don't. I just don't get why though, because I feel like. Hip hop, the most amount of people, I feel like it's it's not the most popular genre because there is genres that are thriving way more than hip hop. But the general consensus, if you talk to young people, is hip hop. But I don't know what it is, but it just seems like everyone, the ignorance factor you were talking about. Well, I nobody think a lot wants of it, to change though. Well, no, well, a lot of it is de- development, like developmental problems, like to whereas, like even when we look at manhood, right? I was I was listening to a podcast, like, um, do you know Robert Greene? Forty Eight Laws of Power. Familiar. He sounds mad familiar. Yeah, lo- Robert Greene's a beast. You gotta look him up. Forty Eight Laws of okay. Power. He did the um, the remix book with uh, Fifty Fiftieth Law of Power. So that yeah. also teaches you a lot of gems too on how to maneuver and you know what I'm saying get through the industry as far as um, just how to carry yourself and shit like that and defense mechanisms. It's just law. It's just law of life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, you know, I was listening to the podcast and um, there was some interesting points about how um, in manhood. There's this thing of, like, men don't use words, they use violence, right? And so we have this thing of, like, this macho bravado mentality to whereas people don't grow, bro. People never get to a point where they learn how to articulate themselves. That's step one. Once you can articulate yourself, now you can navigate the conversation into different directions. Once you can navigate the conversation in different directions, you're going to get a different response. And artists are not there. You know, artists tend to be comfortable with what they think is right based off of those developmental stages early on that they're taught. You know what I mean? I just think yeah. there's a lot of toxic things that are passed on in this culture that we just, because it starts from the streets. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a street genre. You know what I mean? It's, it's raw. You know what I mean? And and a lot of those things that we were taught early on, we carry on into the music. You know what I mean? A lot of artists don't really get the chance to grow. You know? A lot of artists die before they get the chance to grow. Oh, God. You know what I mean? Rip Takeoff, because that happened yesterday. Yeah, rest in peace, Takeoff. Rest take in off. peace, Takeoff. Yeah. But what do you think it is, too? And that's a topic. I don't even know if you want to get into that, but it literally seems like every other week or every couple weeks a rapper's dying. And it's so fucked up because, like, back when it first started happening, like when X, Peep, Juice even, when they died, it was like people actually had their time for people to take it in. Now I feel like it's so many artists are just dying, people can't even process mm-hmm. it. Like, PNB just died a couple weeks ago. Now this takeoff shit, I already forgot about it by then because I'm pretty sure someone else died in between this. But what do you think it is with the rappers just getting killed left and right right now? I just think that, um, you know, I was I was shopping it with one of my older homies the other day, and he said, um, energy's not destroyed, it's transferred. So, you know, there's just this energy that's just being constantly rotated in the air. You know what I mean? And that's like a deeper yeah, layer of life. You know what I mean? I just think a lot of people focus on the fact that as rappers, people are dying every day. And we're just all operating in a negative energy that just shouldn't exist, but it does, right? So my real question is, what what do we do moving forward? What's the new agenda, right? How do we hold people accountable 
to then be like, all right, we need to shift the culture. Something's wrong. I just think we tend, to, as 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 people, we tend to get caught up in the wrong things, which is the problem and never the solution. Hip hop does not come out with solutions very often. That's the problem with hip hop. Okay, we know our artists aren't educated. What are we going to do to educate them? We know our artists are dying. What are we going to do to stop this? Right? Nobody what are we going to do? Nobody does anything. Nobody does anything. Well, it also boils down to what's the structure of it. If they were to do that, how would it benefit the powers that be? And that's another conversation in itself, right? So it really boils down to when you follow the money, where does the money go? And when you follow how the money's divvied up in these actual events and the collateral of these events, who's benefiting from it? You know, and that's another conversation in itself. And if people, you know, choose to, you know, focus on one energy and not focus on the other, we're going to continue to be where we are. It's unfortunate, but that's the reality of things. So that's why I really, like, I'm really big on staying in my own pocket, staying in my lane, and being mindful of the energy I put out. Because, again, energy's not destroyed, it's transferred. That's a fact. That's a fact, bro. Whatever you put around will come right back around and nip you in the ass. Or, or, it, go could, to or it could go to someone it else could around go to you. someone else. But karma's a real, very real thing. Karma's a very real Even thing. Even that is subjective because, you know, some people don't believe in it. So what's their I, truth? You get what I'm true, saying? True. Truth is can be subjective. And that's what's so deep about life. I just think that, you know, we should all at least just be kind to each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, don't, I don't think that it's ever that serious to be, you know, malicious. Nah. You know what I mean? Some of the things that people are malicious about are not even that deep to be that malicious. Oh, God. You get me? Oh, God. So it's like, you know, to take a life is a big thing. And people don't take it serious anymore because the music, the you know. So, like I said, that's just one way to look at it, you know. And there's there's other ways to look at it, but you know, the solution is what we should really be looking at. A common um, debate is whether it was like the younger generation right now or the older heads were wild, more wild. What do you think? Like seeing what's going on right now, do you think the new generation is more wild than people have ever gone? I and, think. Oh, I was gonna say also too. Do you think um. Like, the street music, do you think that's ever going to die out also? Yeah, I think um, f for the younger artists that are in it, they feel like it's not because they feel like they're impacted by it. You know, it's now. But, I mean, it could be as simple as, like, on a smaller scale, like, the friends that you have at 21 are not going to matter at 31. The girlfriend you're stressing over at 21 that you're ready to kill your mans over is not going to be even in your thought process at 31. So I just think that, you know... Everything comes and goes. Life is a constant. Nothing lasts forever. You get me? So it's just like, you know, um, nothing stays the same. You know what I mean? You could either accept that as being true or you could get lost in the times, you know? There's going to be some artists right now that are 21 right now still going to be on the same bullshit when they're 31. You know what I mean? They're going to be lost. You know what yeah. I mean? Same way there's people who's 31 who's still on the same bullshit when they was 21. It's just life. Either you're going to evolve and move with the times. That even goes back to when I was telling you about lyricism. Now's not the time and place for lyricism. Nobody want to hear that. That's not how the youngins connect to it. That's not even how the older heads connect to it because, you know, music is like hypnosis. You hear it a lot. You hear it a lot. You hear it a lot. Now you're trained to have a thought, a, a way you think about things. The other day, my, my man's was, I was riding with my man. He was saying he's an older dude. He's in his 50s. He was like, yo, that song stuck in my head. I said, what song? He's like, yo, I, I, don't, I don't know the name of the artist, but it's that Mary J sample. Like, all I want to do. He's like, but he sound kind of drunk when he come on. Da, da, da. I'm like, oh, that's YG. But he's saying to, him, to me that it reminds him of Lil Wayne. Hmm. So I remember the early stages of when Lil Wayne first came out, and they were saying Wayne is whack. And to me, Wayne was the hardest artist to come out. When, when I was younger, when I was you know what I'm saying? Looking up to music and everything, Soldier Boy was coming out. Soldier Boy was doing the crank that. And they said he killed hip hop. You get me? Yeah. Uh, they okay. saying I remember at a time Jay Z said, I can't wear skinny jeans because my knots don't fit. What song was that on? That was Swagger Like Us. Yeah. So they're going to always go against what's new. You know what I mean? They were saying Cole Ray is just a TikTok artist now. Everyone's trying to promote their music through TikTok. You know what I mean? Even, like, a lot of artists that were doing good just two years ago are all dying out. Oh you know what I mean? COVID kind of shifted the attention of the of the consumers and what people want to focus on now. What are your thoughts on how everything is just so fast-paced now? It's literally like you it's could great. be an artist. I think it's, I think it's great because if you have your own pocket, you're going to know what to do with it. You know what I mean? You're going to jump in, and, and it's going to be great for you. Like I said, an artist is always going to emerge. Someone's always going to come on 
top from just timing. Timing, being in the right place, right time, and just execution. Someone's going to come on top. There's going to be a lot of people who lose, but someone's going to come on top. So I think it's great that new new artists emerge. I think everyone deserves an opportunity. Oh, God. You know what I mean? I don't want to yeah. just focus on just it being around music, but in life in general, I just think that opportunity should always present itself for people. I think people should do great, bro. I'm not a hater, bro. Uh, yeah. Huh. What are your thoughts, though? Like, Why do so many people, it seems? Because I know damn well anyone in this room, if we're given some of the opportunities some of these trendy people are given wouldn't fuck it up. And it goes back to you saying having a plan and being prepared and shit. Like, what do you think so many of these artists are just having these second minute long careers for? Like, because with the fast pace, I feel like how you were saying, I never really thought about the goodness of it, how everything could just go fast if it's the right timing and stuff. Um, But I feel like so many of them, like look at Lil Pump, for instance, if he would have taken music, a completely different thing and did everything different? Dude could be one of the biggest artists right now, but it's J. Cole literally predicted that shit. I don't know if you saw anything recently, how people are talking about that, because an interviewer asked him, he's like, do you think J. Cole predicted your career? And he got mad awkward. Like, do you remember that J. Cole Lil Pump shit? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, like, artists like that, like, Lil Pump is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you, how, why do you, what do you think goes through their heads that they fuck up a bag that bad? I mean... Because I feel like almost every artist that comes up now, I can't think of an artist... You too, besides like 10 years ago, name an artist in the past like five years that has really stuck with you or that has came out in the five years that you could really be like, yo, this person's still relevant right now. I can name a lot. It just you depends can. on what you define as relevant. And for one, name a drug dealer that you know right now that's still popping from the 80s. Rap is the new crack game, bro. You could get in with a low startup cost, bro, and flourish. You can start off with a with a fifty dollar mic, bro. You can go right down to uh, Micro Center, bro. Get you a fifty dollar mic. Go get you a used uh, um, interface off of um, Craigslist. Get you a fucked up computer, bro, and get it popping, bro. You and your man's in a bedroom. Just hang up some uh, some comforters and shit, bro, and just your man's got a crack version of Fruity Loops. It's the same shit as turning out. an eight ball into a brick. There you go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and rap is the new crack. So, you know what I mean? You give people money. You give people opportunity that never thought they were going to have it. Just one thing led to another. This is what's going to happen. And then you do have artists that are still relevant. Again, it goes back to being organized and having a plan and knowing you're going to be there. Brent Fayez. I was on I five about years Brent. ago. Brent He's still relevant, fuck. right? I forgot about that. J. Cole's still about relevant, that. right? So, of that. course, there's going to be, you know what I'm saying? It just depends on what pocket you're in. So, that's why I'm Baby advising the young generation to educate themselves. I'm advising the young. All right. There's a book. By Donald Passman called Everything You Need to Know About the Music Industry. Read it. There you go. I read that. This everything I you need that. to know is in there. That's a yellow book. You know book, what I'm saying? Right? You said That's what? It's a yellow book. The yellow well, it depends everything. because they you know they always update they the, the versions. Yeah, it's yeah, the addition. Everything Mine's you need blue. to know. Oh, so I don't mine know what is color yellow. yours is. Mine is yellow. Mine yours is yellow. yellow. I, read I, don't know I read it this year. year. You read it this year, so you might got the newer edition of me. I might have to upgrade. You know what I mean? I'll let you borrow it. Shit. You just gotta return it because every single person I've let borrow a book has not. <laughs> All right, well, here's it. another fact. You can go to your local library. A library's free. Everybody does. It. But nobody yeah. seems to want to do Wait. that. We, yo, in America, we have access to free education, bro. Bro. We have access to free education, bro. How about this? If you want to get a trademark, you can get a trademark for free through the um library, bro. The Northeastern students have a pro bono lawyer, bro, that links up with a patent um office right through the Boston Public Library. I wouldn't lie to you, bro. You can call them right now, bro. Call him right now, bro, and get a free trademark, bro. I know that because I be in real circles, bro. I be in the circles of people that doing startups and they launching from MIT. They pitching they shit like Shark Tank, bro. I be in real circles around real business. And there's just a parallel for me, bro. The music business and other business. It's all business, bro. So I don't go into the music industry looking at it like, it's like this, bro. Some people will go to work and do exactly what they're told to do, right? But music is a job. They'll go to their job and fuck it up because everyone else is fucking it up, right? So it just it just boils down to mentality, bro. Is you really going to treat that shit like it's your baby? You're going to treat that shit like it's your business? You're going to treat that shit like it's a reflection of you? Like, what you going to treat it like? You know what I'm saying? Because uh, it's, it's money. Bro. It's money, bro. If you, if you look at it, if you have an open mind, if you're open-minded enough to see it, it's money. Because them conversations that I'm not going to name, I'm not going to put a particular artist because that could come back and bite me in the ass later. But I'll just say in the industry, if you look at most of these artists, we don't know what's being said 
in their meet in their meetings with the labels and shit, right? And their minds are being opened up when they're looking at these brand deals and they're seeing the splits and they're looking at um you know they're looking at um new business ventures and stuff like that. Their mind is being opened up. Their music is not going to reflect that because they're going to keep selling you that crack, that crack you used to. That's what's keeping they shit flowing. They just want to show you what you want to see. But they're not going to go and put that out there and be like, yo, I'm growing. You know what I mean? It's it's rare you get artists that grow with their music. Like J. Cole is one of them. He grows with his music. And when his perspective shifts, you're going to feel it. When Kendrick's perspective shifts and he feels like there's a need for something, he's going to feel that void. But again, they're older. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not a hater, bro. I'm not going to compare the new generation, what y'all vibe to, what what, what they vibe to. Yeah. That's that's a hater, bro. But what I can say, we could do better. We could have more mm-hmm. of a balance. You know what I mean? Like, I, I love the turn up music. You know what I'm saying? I love the ratchet shit. I'm ratchet. Fuck it. You know what I mean? There's a time and place to be ratchet, though. Okay. We need that balance back, right? And we just need to hold people accountable, bro, and just keep growing. You know what I mean? We're doing good just because, you know, there's been some people we lost, which is not a good thing. There's other positive things to focus on. I just feel like we just need to do better as 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 in any facet of life, in any industry, in anything. There's always room for improvement, but I definitely think we need to do better. Talking about doing better, you just said all this stuff about business and everything yeah. and education in general. How important do you think it is as an artist to like educate yourself on the stuff you don't know about, like business things, like the way you were talking about doing a trademark and stuff? How crucial do you think it is if you want to actually succeed in this music business to... If you're not going to be fully aware, at least get somebody that is aware of it or teach yourself it. Like, if you if you don't know shit about business, how crucial do you think it is to either have someone in your circle that can handle all of it or learn it yourself? I mean, I just, uh, for me personally, I think it's so hard for me to just say some shit and then expect someone to do it like me, right? It's like Michael Jordan could teach you the craziest crossover until you go do that. Would you be able to do it? is the question. Uh, Would you be able to do it like him or better is the question, right? So, like, I've learned that. So, like, I'm going to be very cautious with just how I put out some crazy smart shit, and I'm like, yeah, you should do it this way. Go do it. And then people feel like, well, I can't do it because I don't even know where to start. So I'm going to give people the real dumbed-down version of where to start, right? Because shit can always go bad. And that's the first thing that people resonate with. Well, what if, what if? I say this. I say this. Start off with people that are where you are. Right? You don't go reach, oh, this is the person that manages so-and-so. They have success. I'm going to go partner up with them because shit could obviously go wrong because everything sways in their favor and not yours. Start off with equal level individuals, right, and just keep going down that road, and the universe is going to bring what's meant for you. You know what I'm saying? Definitely educate yourself, but education is so simple. It's a lot of YouTube videos, you know what I mean? There's a lot of links you can watch. And then just being humble to be like, yo, you know what? I'm going to find the guy with the information and just hit him up. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these industry execs and shit like that, they don't have a million followers. They really got like 1,500 followers. So you could just literally DM, boop, proposition. Yo, you need help? If you need help, I'll help you for free. If there's anything, you know, da-da-da, in exchange, I just want to be able to learn the ropes. Right, so you put your mans there. Your mans want to be an A and R, bro. Every Tuesday, bro, and every Thursday, bro, you need to go intern over there. That's what you need to do. That's what your job's gonna be. I found someone for you, bro. Got fifteen hundred followers, bro. You know what I'm saying? He worked with this record label. You gonna go over there? That's gonna be your job, right? Like I just think that, you know, um, we don't hold each other accountable. I think I've never even seen some artist with a dry erase board, bro, with goals for the week, bro. You know what I'm saying? In times. If you don't have a date when things are going to happen, Bob, bro, it's not going to happen. It's just in your head. Bro, so many people argue against me I, on that, like yeah. setting dates for shit. You have I'm to like, write bro. it down. If you don't write it down, you're not going to be able to, like, put it out into the world. What are your thoughts on manifestation? I'm, multiple times I wanted to ask you throughout this. But. I think a lot of this stuff is naturally in us, right? I think that reading all this stuff and bringing it to light is cool, is dope, but it's naturally in us. It's a way we are. Right. And I think if you go with your natural ability, like away from the peer pressure, you go into the natural, like ambitious stage. Like I, I watch my nephew now. He's five. Right. He, he he's, he's he's running now. You know what I mean? He's running out of school. He's, he's racing his mans. The other day he come home kind of heated. I'm like, yo, Neff, what's good? What's the word? You know what I'm saying? Like you walking past me, you not even talking to me, bro. Like what's the word? Because when you grow up in a West Indian household, you have to say what's up to your peoples or, you know, it's a problem. He walk right by me. He breathes right by me like he don't see me. Now nah, I got it. Yo, what's the word, Neff? What's good? 
says, yo, um, you know, so-and-so beat me in a, in, in a race at school today. So now I see his, his brain work and I see it's functioning now. This is his first time being in a place where other people have different abilities and some of them might be a little bit better than his. You know what I'm saying? So now I got to work with him. Yo, Neff, this is how you, you know what I mean? Run a little bit faster. Let me see you run. Ah, Neff, I like that. But you could do it better like this. Try it this way. Right? And then now I'm showing him certain stuff. Yo, let's get the timer out. Boom, this is the time. Oh, that's the time. Yeah, you beat your time last time. Building up his confidence. Not everyone has someone like me. You get what I'm saying? So I just I just I think a lot of that boils down to that. That was deep though. That was deep. That was deep. That yeah, was, that was deep. Bro, I told you, Mr. Deep. That should be your nickname. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Deep. Um Fuck, I just had another question, bro. I keep having, you've been talking so much and you've been giving this op, a podcast so many different opportunities to go in different directions. Bro, I've been, I've been waiting to light this bro, podcast up, bro. You, you know lighting. that, and I told you, bro, like, no, if, I, if no, we, if I've this goes waiting. and this gets motion, bro, I'm a charge for a subscription, bro. bro. We're going to get a copy, bro. I'll give Yo, them a masterclass, bro. bro. I'll bring some people out from bro. a label and sit people down and tell them how it needs to be done, bro. bro. You know what I'm saying? It's just a matter of, uh, do people have tough enough skin when it comes time to, yo, listen, that ain't the one. Go back to the drawing board. Oh, God. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just think people be too, like, yo, rap, hip-hop's too egotistical, bro. If you you need to work on it, you need to work on it. You get me? So that's all it really is, bro. Talking about egotistical, I was going to save this question for the end, but mm -hmm. I know a lot of people say that this is, it's a big problem in the industry in general, but a lot of people say, especially around here, since you've seen the industry for so long, what are your thoughts on, like, the typical saying that nobody shows love, everyone has an ego in Boston slash mass. I'll say mass because I'm trying to stay away from saying Boston. Yeah. Um, but what are your thoughts on just like the scene over here? Like um, I people's think, attitudes. I think a lot of stuff that people talk about is just not necessary. Like I think this is like like at the end of the day, bro, we live in the internet age, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like like, all right, someone from California can hear your music. You might have a California sound, but you might be from Randolph. You know what I mean? You might be from Boston, but you might have a Texas sound. At the end of the day, find your pocket on the internet, lock in, and just keep working, bro. And everything that's meant for you is going to come to you. I just think that everyone focusing on everyone and, you know, we need to do this and we need to, no, we need to just educate ourselves and do what you do and work with, do what works for you. You know what I'm saying? I be in my own lane, bro. So, like, I don't be looking at what the collectives do. I don't look at follow the leader. I'm not following nobody. I'm following God, bro. That's why I told you it's BC3, bro. God first, my purpose and the people second, then me, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm not derived of following someone. There's no one. I, I don't put people above my purpose or God. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, how does that even work, bro? And I don't feel entitled because DOD's popping that they have to hand me something and we need to work together and we need to know if it's meant to be, it'll happen. Maybe I need to get my my work ethic up. Maybe I need to move around. Maybe I need to represent myself in a better way. Shit, maybe the clothes I'm wearing in my music video ain't fly enough. Maybe I need to talk to a stylist. It's just different yeah, things man. maybe I need to work on to get popping, bro. All the artists in my DMs that literally don't have anything out and don't have any sign of work ethic, I am going to send you this clip. <laughs> I'm yeah, going to send you Yeah, but that's the bottom clip. layer, though. That is the that's bottom That's the bottom layer. layer. That's, that's the, bottom the lowest layer. layer. I don't put on my music. Then there's a layer above that. I put on my music, but well, shit, shit ain't popping. And then there's a layer above that. I put out my music, but I'm stuck. That's kind of the layer I was at for, for a while. And a lot of it was just, it, it really wasn't... Um, it really wasn't 100% me. It was that I didn't understand technology to, like, to its fullest degree, like really how to utilize it. Like I said, I came from the mixtape era. Yeah. So coming into this, y'all are babies of this. Y'all was born into it. So a CD, y'all like, fuck a CD. I was still kind of caught up in what was. I remember the CD era. I was mad young, but I remember having to burn everything on fucking CDs because yeah. I couldn't pay for the Apple music. I had like three Crazy Frog songs on my iPod and everything else was pirated. <laughs> so you so you grew up on LimeWire? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that wasn't too far off. Yeah, yeah that LimeWire. wasn't too far off. That was just 2000, 2001 I was born, but LimeWire, because my uncle ran a studio. So he did, yeah. literally in my apartment, it was a two-bedroom apartment. Me and my dad slept on an air mattress in the living room, but my uncle ran a studio out of there. So they would just have mad fucking music just being made. He would be teaching me how to play instruments and uncle? shit. Um, his name's Where he Where he run a studio out of? No, he ran the studio out of our apartment in Braintree. In Braintree? In Braintree, he ran our studio, but then he worked at, I think he worked at Phoenix before it was Phoenix Down. I don't know where, yeah. but he worked at a studio in um, Somerville somewhere. He worked oh, yeah? at a studio. Yeah. 
I'll tell you his last name off camera, but it's not. Right. You gotta show me a picture. I think I know him. No way. Because that's my era. That's my era. If it is Bugs. That's Bugs. Bugs was his um rap name. Bugs. Rap and producer name was Bugs. Nah, I might not know. We'll, we'll go off uh, camera. We'll uh, go yeah, off camera. I'll have, I gotta to, see, I'll have to show you. Yeah, that's crazy. That's what's I'll up, though. You, yeah, you see, like, like that, but that's but that's what I mean about how dope it is. Like, it starts off like you being curious, you being hungry, you being, and then just elevating and taking it to the next level. You know what I mean? But like, oh, even man. for you guys, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna say this on camera because I gotta get flowers. It's like there's that bottom layer of like, just you can pay some money, you can book our studio, and then there's that next layer of like, yo, we produce some shit out of here. Right. And like that, that has to really start happening. And then there's the next layer of like, yo, some type of scarcity, like not anyone could just come here. Right. Yeah. And then that just builds up from hard work and, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Dedication. God. And like layer, the, the artists are already trying to skip layers. Like the first layers, put it out. Oh, God. Become known for something. Oh, God. If you want to be known for drill and kill people, that's what you want to be known for. If you want to know to make people dance, be known for that. But figure out what you want to stand on and what you believe in. You know what I'm saying? And what is the best layer of you? You know what I mean? Like, for me personally, drilling is not the best layer of me. I'm not trying to put that out. Uh -uh. You know what I'm saying? And and it's just because it really is just one of those things where it's just like, really? Do I need to be doing that? No, I don't need to be doing that. There's a lot of other things I could do than, um, you know, rapping about people that have passed away. You can make a lot of money doing anything, bro. You can make a lot of money driving Uber. Oh, God. And that's oh, more God. guaranteed than rap. Oh, God. It's an app. You get a whip, you get you some good credit. I can teach y'all how to run up y'all credit real quick. Go get you a little whip. Maybe get two, three whips from a Bank of America loan. You can put like four whips under one loan. You know what I'm saying? Put three on Toro, ride one around all day for Uber. Worst case scenario, you cover the cost of name out being rented out. You got residual income coming in. You don't have to rap, bro. Rapping for me, bro, is like a low tier of like business, bro. Because you could get into real estate. Your money's going to, like, really do something and it's more secure. There's a lot of other hustles. Yo, bro, you could get into pharmaceuticals. Okay. You could get in the cannabis industry. There's a lot of yeah, things yeah. you could do legal. And they got to give us that now, bro. Like, even now, bro, like, they're giving away things, bro. They're giving LTCs, bro. They're they letting people get into the construction union, yeah. bro. A lot of things are happening because the baby boomers are dying, bro. And with the baby boomers dying, bro, there's a whole new wave of people, bro. People are being more mixed. People are socializing more, bro. Racism is starting to get like, yo, we're not doing that. You know I'm saying because, like, that's what I mean. Even when it boils down to rap and hip-hop, like, what really is it now is just pop. It's just one thing, bro, because, like, all this shit is, like, brewed up and derived maybe from one place. But, like, that one place took everything else under that one umbrella, and now it's just kind of like one thing. Like, even when you look at Lil Pump, it's like, what really is he? Is he a rapper? Mm, is he a yeah. pop, a rock star? What is Young Thug? You know what I mean? So it's like, it's dope, bro. Like, you could just do something quick if you got some confidence, you know what I mean? Really swear you're the best. Tell everyone you're the best. Put it out, and you're the best because you said you was the best. And you just kept saying you were the best every trip, bro, even when you didn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? So rap is cool. Rap, rap, is, rap is easy. I mean, you just do a little something, something, and you get it popping, make millions. You know what I mean? And that's, like, the only thing you could do nowadays. Oh God. You know what I mean? Crack ain't mm -hmm. selling like it used to sell. Music is the new crack. Bro, he's spitting straight facts. Like, here. even look at gangs, bro. How do gangs, like, some major gangs, bro, how do they fund themselves, bro? Music. The the, the D-O-J. All the Rico is going on. The, the D-O-J, the Department of Justice, want to put a halt to that. Y'all getting all this money? And not none of it traces back to drugs. And y'all influencing our children. Y'all organizing. That's why all the RICO cases happening, bro. But even that, like, again, energy's not destroyed. It's transferred. Do you. That's what y'all on. That's what I was saying, the manifesting thing for. Because you might have artists that never talk about or never participate in shooting, anything like that. Talk about it in their music all the time. And then end up getting shot. <laughs> Well, it's not even right. just that. Like, it also boils down, again, going back to the age thing. Like, at that age, yeah, you're going to think like that. But when you get older, you're going to be like, that is what it is. Why do I need to make it more than what it is? Yeah. If that's what it is, that's what it is. I don't need to make it more than that. You get me? Like, let's go do something different. Because the more you expose me to something different, the more I'm like, damn, I'm actually living my life and I'm not being in a cage, right? Sometimes, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, if your circle don't push you, it's a cage, bro. It's, it's, it's a cage, bro. You locked in. 
So, like, now I really, like, challenge myself, bro. I go kayaking, bro. Like, I was telling you about that, bro. I be up in Medfield, bro, just, like, kayaking, launching underneath the bridge right there. And the Charles River, like, expands all the way from Boston all the way up there. So, like, I be experiencing different things. Like, the drought, it was cool. It's not cool, but it was cool to experience it and see, like, damn, like, this is what's happening with drier summers. This is global warming. This is what it's all about. You know what I mean? You see, like, the erosion of, the like, the sand pushing in. The beavers are now on top of the water instead of under it because it's, like, so dry. And then, like, yeah, it's deep. So these are the things that I'm experiencing. And those uh, that other stuff, it is what it is. If that's what it is, that's what it is, bro. Like, we don't need to, you know, that's what it is, bro. I know that. Because that's what it is. That's been my whole life. So let's go over here with that. I don't know this yet. You know what I mean? Like, do you want to open a door and do you want to explore things you don't know? It just boils down to who you are as a person. Yeah. Like, I'm mad curious about things. I have morals and shit like that. I formed my morals. I formed my uh, my opinion, right, on some basic shit. There's things I'm not willing to do or compromise as a man because I'm still a man first. And then there's all the other, well, I don't know. Let me meet you in the middle because there's your truth, my truth, and there's the truth, right? So we could either agree to disagree or we could agree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like people are not even at that point. It's my way or the highway. And that's crazy, bro. How you ever going to grow, bro? How you ever going to get some real money, bro? People are stubborn, bro. Bro, in business meetings, bro, it's always about coming to a resolution, bro. The art of negotiation by Donald Trump, bro. Literally what... We read all the same fucking books, bro. Bro, I could burn those books. Bro, but know? wait, I want to say this point before yeah. I forget. Literally all businesses is how to solve problems. That's literally all businesses yeah. is yeah. just problem solving yeah. after yeah. fucking yeah. problem yeah. solving. Yeah. That's yeah. all it is yeah. is coming up with solutions. Yeah, when you're dealing with humans, there's always a problem. Bro. So the more <laughs> problems you can solve, the more money you're going to get. You know what I'm oh, saying? God. But are you going to solve problems or are you going to be the problem? A lot of artists are the problem, right? And that's the problem. A lot of people are their own problem. Even yeah. outside of artists, just people in general, yeah. bro. Yeah. Like, talk, bro. you look in the mirror, yeah. I almost guarantee yeah. you that's your own problem. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. and even you could be a good ass person, bro. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, everything's in your hands. Literally, everything is in your hands. And a lot of people, when you realize that, that's like the first step you need to just take to find yourself, or I don't even know what the fuck, just be a real human. But what <laughs> age did you start holding yourself accountable? Probably when I was like 18 because I had the culture shock of being young and then not doing anything and sitting in my room playing video games and I just got thrown into the real world. Didn't go to college and just started working and it just, life hit me in the fucking face. <laughs> so that's what I did too and, and, and that's what makes um, young adults more successful than a lot of other adults because you you have a practical understanding of day-to-day -day life, right? How life functions, yeah. how people are. And then you also get the experience of working with older people. Yeah. So when you're at work all day and you're hearing a person that 40 years old complaining like yo you like damn i don't want to be like that bro, when i'm 40 god, god, god bro and you go to work every day looking oh, at the same god. person like yo he's still complaining <laughs> he's god still damn mad. i gotta give me some paper this bro. music gotta work oh god, god damn you might bro. get on the phone from the bathroom text and sell you yo bro yo. anything good bro just thinking about your baby your business you know what oh. i'm saying because that's all you got bro like yo when you a man bro really all you got bro is your fucking, your balls and your word, bro. That's oh, all you God. got, bro. So you got to value those, bro. Like, it just depends on what type of individual you are, bro. Like, I feel like there's solid individuals in every type of, like, they're community, all. bro. Like, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, but, I be in the snowboarding community. I be in the kayaking community. Yeah. And I be, like, kayaking. And then I hear something slick. And I'll be like, yo, this is a dangerous dude, bro. I'm like, damn, he's dangerous, bro. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? There's always going to be someone that could drill you down. And it's not going to be a person that always look like you. It's not going to always be the person in the black hoodie rapping about his ops. It might be, Never you know what I'm saying? It's covered, bro. Yeah, Never it might be the dude that covered. be Look at Jeffrey Dahmer, bro. That's what I'm trying <laughs> to tell you, bro. Look at Jeffrey Dahmer, bro. That's Never judge a book by you, his cover, dog. That's what I'm trying to tell you, bro. So, like. That that was a big thing in, in, in being practical, bro, and learning the real the real world, bro. And I know that's something that you're learning now and yeah, you're, yeah. you're developing, bro. Like I seen you develop. I kinda seen y'all yeah, yeah. like grow and then you know what I'm saying, up the rates and you know what I mean? Like I'm happy to hear stuff like that. I when you up your it, prices, it make me up my prices. Like, oh they didn't up their prices. <laughs> so now I gotta up my prices on y'all because somebody gotta pay for it and it ain't gonna be me. You understand? And that's how artists gotta think. 
You know what I'm saying? An artist oh, gotta yeah. wanna be in that type of energy in that type of environment. But artists gotta stop like pocket watching and getting butt hurt, and everyone just needs to like. Uh, this is one of my biggest things, bro. You could either watch one person succeed, and you could either be like. I'm trying to do that. I'm going to do that. Let's move at the same rate. Or you could just sit there like a little bitch and fucking cry about it. Like everyone for some reason, because you've talked mad, mad in this whole thing about pocket watchers and people just paying attention to what other people are doing. Um, and obviously jealousy is like a key component in this. But why, what are your thoughts on that? Why are so many people like, say your friend group right now, I'm sure you probably have a solid group of people. So I don't even yeah. think you do. But say you were to go to blow up right now in your music circle. I guarantee you, I could be wrong because you could have a solid group of people. There's going to be some motherfuckers that are just a weird as shit because it wasn't them. Like, why do you think people think like that? Obviously, it's just I mean, I, said, I mean, a lot of it, like, it depends on your beliefs. You know what I'm saying? Because I could say my belief and it could be different than other people's belief. I mean, if you're religious, it's going to boil down to the 12 disciples. You know what I'm saying? If, if you follow Christianity, you know what I mean? If um, you want to break it down on a simple level, it could be cultural. You know what I mean? It could be just self-hate that is constantly being taught. You know what I'm saying? And whatever culture. Because there's white people that hate on white people. There's black people that hate on black people. Oh, I'm learning. I'm seeing. I'm like, man, this shit is everywhere, bro. bro. So I say this about that. Because like I said, en energy is transferable. So I don't want to speak anything in in into my future that I'm going to regret. I would say this. Anything can happen in life. Right? So the most important layer is know yourself, right? And then from there, you could kind of navigate around people. You can kind of figure things out from there, right? And if you're doing a lot of things outside of music, which is dope, independent artists should be. Independent artists should be working. A lot of artists are afraid to get a job because they're, I'm a rapper and I'm a, nah, bro, here's what you do, bro. You go get you a job and you go get you Instacart. You go do Instacart, you go get you an LLC, Go do an LLC. You run the Instacart money through your LLC. Now you're going to go build your business credit up. You go build your business credit up and you got tax returns as a business. You operate two years. Then you could go pull that $200,000 loan and go level up. You can go get that feature with Lil Durk. You can go get that shit that's going to get you popping. You can get the funding that you're going to need to get to the next level. But also in that time frame, you need to be putting out music, right? Oh, so so, so you're, you're getting people used to seeing what you're about and then from there you could grow you gotta have your man doing that internship over at so when you're ready a year down the line two years down the line you educated you feel like you're ready to go all in the pieces of the puzzle just make sense and then there's levels to even relationships relationships die out you know what i mean you might start off with your man and then you reach a level where he can't get you further than that like i tell people all the time like I'm pretty sure with my knowledge and my intellect, I can get an artist to a million dollars. I probably could. You know what I'm saying? I haven't tested it out because I haven't had devoted artists, but I could sit with an artist and be like, do this and do that. And I'm pretty sure, bro, I'm pretty sure that I could test this theory out, bro, and make an artist a million dollar artist. I might not be able to get you to 10 million. We might need to now pair up with the people who is over there working on the Uzi Vert project because you got an Uzi Vert sound. So let's go team up with them and use some of their resources. Let's go team up with these people. Right. So I know my place as a businessman. I know that I can get you here, but here we might need to have. And, and some of that could be ego or some of that could be a misunderstanding. People not knowing that, yo, you know what? We maxed out for what we know. Let's bring in outside sources. You know, a lot of it is just trial and error. And unfortunately, good relationships could be severed through trial and error. Oh, God. So you just got to keep moving through life, through all the hurdles and just understand that. If you get a chance to breathe and live and, 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 and you get to be alive, bro, and you have your freedom, bro, you could just keep pushing, bro. Keep pushing, keep pushing. That's the key, bro. You know what I mean? All the other stuff is kind of like theory compared to that. The only truth, bro, is that our time is limited, bro. Oh, There's only one truth of life, bro, and I've never seen no man escape that one truth, bro. So, you know, everything you do between now and then is just, you know, it's just up to you. What's your legacy? What do you want to leave behind? What do you want to be known for? I don't want to be known as the guy who rapped about drilling the ops. That's not what I want to be known for. There's a lot of layers to me. So if I could choose the best layer to me, it would be to promote positivity, promote growth, and show people and educate people on, um, you know, financial freedom. Because that comes from different, um, different lanes, bro. Not just rap, bro. Uh, so many people don't realize too. It's it's the most basic shit, bro. 
that you could make money off of. Everybody looks at these glamorous to things. To you, like, though. To you. We got to look at our cultures. Oh, you, no, I know. But, no, I'm saying, like, yeah. everyone is just so blind to the fact that mm -hmm. how do you think these random-ass people you don't know about are driving Ferraris and have $20 million houses? They're not making raps. They're not fucking acting. Like, some of them might be. Some mm -hmm. of them definitely are. But it's like, bro, like, there's realistic Easy ass ways that are just everyday things like drop shipping. You could literally become a fucking millionaire off of buying toothpaste and selling it to fucking Amazon. Yeah, but to if be real, you, you do. that's what I'm saying. Even like, all right, I'm gonna piggyback off that. That's to you. You smart in 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 financial aspect of things, right? Some people might not be smart in that. Oh no, some people so, definitely are, but they need. Yeah, so I'm learning learn. too at this age, bro, to not be that hard on people, right? Yeah, because like you got these big. Like entrepreneurial goals, not everyone has that. Some people that's just want to rap, that's so facts. that's why the the game I'm giving them is, yo, listen, you might you don't got to be the smartest apple in the group, yeah, but you got to have someone who's the smartest or apple in the group. Some knowledge, at least, I feel like some people. Do. Yeah, you got to have some knowledge. Like, be familiar with what you're getting into, but have someone in your corner that you're starting off with. That's that smart guy. If that. you got your man's that smart, stop trying to turn all your friends into something bad because it benefits you. You got some people who got a friend who's a square, and instead of keeping that friend as a square and being like, yo, you know what? You go over here, you go do the college thing. It's, yo, can you, can you, can you, can you? And then it's to further themselves in the bad, shady business that they're doing. You can't do that. You got to know when to separate the two. So when they're saying it's gangster rap, it's not gangster rap because it's really not organized. It's straight up crime and it's straight up things that are happening that people can see. You know what I mean? People can see. You know what I mean? Like, so that's what I mean about if it is what it is, it is what it is. You get me? So, like, a lot of people can't see that, bro. There's, like, big layers to this shit, bro. Like, there's a lot of layers, bro, when you apply yourself, bro. When you take the time to think about shit, bro. People don't take the time to think about shit. They don't take the time to even think about why am I doing this? You know what I mean? People don't think about why they're getting So many people don't have purpose, bro. That's that's like what yeah. makes or breaks people. We talked about it earlier on, but it's literally like realizing what your purpose is like. There's so many people that are on their goddamn deathbed that haven't figured and, that and, out. And can I be honest with you? And this one's going to strike home. You're a very passionate guy, very intelligent guy. Thank you. Thank you. If you step away from the passion and the intelligence and we just keep it real simple... Rappers, you don't even have to do that. You don't even have to have purpose. That's what's so dope about rap. All these rules and stuff. I'm not like not like I'm not like Talib Kweli or Common. That's not really my style. I'm not really like a conscious type of guy. But I'm right in the middle, right? I'm balanced, yeah. right? I'm right in between ratchet and that. You know what I mean? Like that's why I like J Cole. I'm right in the middle, right? So we give a right in the middle opinion where we don't scare away the people who don't want to be on all smart and read a thousand books right and then we take the people who want to read a thousand books right and we bring them together bro you know what that conversation would be right. you don't have to do this you don't have to do that but you could you could but at the bare minimum let's 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 this is the real sauce at the bare minimum what do you think artists should do? And then I'm going to piggyback off that, and I'm going to say what I think artists should do. Again, this is not, let's step away from the smart stuff that we know you could do and the smart stuff that we know I could do. And let's 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 just dumb it all the way down to the average guy who's just like, yo, bro, I'm not even good at reading. I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not good at reading. I'm not that confident, but I love music. It's what I know I want to do, and I don't have too many smart people around me. Where can I start? Because, again, a lot of stuff that we say could turn a lot of people off because they might not be like that. Yeah. They might be kind of just like. I think what it is for people, bro, like people are just like I feel like I'm, I'm not trying to like downplay a lot of people. But I feel like a lot of people just like don't want to do better for themselves. Mm -hmm. Like you might not want to read books. You could listen to audiobooks, or even if that's not your thing. You're talking about the podcast. Everyone loves watching podcasts right now. You could go watch a bunch of No Jumper, Vlad TV, whatever podcasts, and learn damn near everything you need to know about the industry. Everyone has different learning styles, and there's literally so much different ways of getting information, even if neither of that's your route. Go fucking, if you want to be an engineer, hit up every single studio around you, actually work for it, and try to get somebody to, like, let you go sit at their studio and learn. Like, people just don't even want to take the first step. They just think it's going to happen or someone else is going to make it happen for themselves. No one wants to go see, like, okay, I'm not good at this, so maybe I should try this. Okay, this isn't working for me either. Like, people don't even want to take the step to try. So, can I tell you how old are you? Well, I want you to I'm say 21. 
21. The problem is you're expecting 21-year-olds <laughs> who just found out they could drink <laughs> to be responsible, bro. Yeah. Everything that you're is saying that is, is something fact. that an older artist is going to understand because they yeah. went through trials and tribulations. So my thing is with you, right, like, you know what I'm saying? Like we 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 kick it off camera like fam. So yeah. I'm just I'm just gonna you know say what I say. Yeah. Um, I think that you're trying to milk something out of something that there's no understanding to for those group of people. I feel like you're you're ahead of your peers and you're frustrated because I'm hearing everything you're saying and I do agree. I know but, you know everything. But that yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. About. And I do agree, but I also think that like you have big expectations for 21 year olds. 21-year-olds wreck their car every day from driving drunk. 21-year-olds. There's a lot of things 21-year-olds do that's bad, and, and and it's deeper than music, right? So I just think that you got to just change your pocket. Change your pocket mm -hmm. a little bit. You know what I mean? Change how you present it to them. Like, we already here. We live in the building. This is a great start, but we got to change how, we, how, 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 how they can perceive it. You know what I mean? Because okay. people tend to not understand it when you just tell them it. Yeah. You can tell a person, hey, yo, my man, go walk down the street. There's a million dollars down the street. I just got me a bag. <laughs> All you got to do is go right down the street. There's a blue bag right there. They I can't carry the it, other bro. bag. That's why I had to leave it. But it's still there. I want you to go get it because I don't want it to just go to waste. They're going to look at you crazy. They're going to ask you a million questions. <laughs> well, how many steps is it to get there? Like, is it, what color is the bag? Where's the dumpster at? The dumpster we just walked by, bro. Oh, well, why, why you, why you on the move? Why? Because I got three mil on me, bro. I got two in one hand, one in the other hand. You wasting my time, bro. I got to get these to the crib, bro. What are you talking about, bro? They don't understand that, right? And so I have to, I've learned, like, through the years, bro, like, just connecting with the younger generation or whatnot. Like I got little cousins and stuff. It's like sometimes you just gotta change how you say it. You know what I mean? Like you gotta look yeah. at there's mad there's mad layers because you gotta understand the artists you're watching now. There's only one artist right now who's transformed from the time you started with this to now, and he's in your pocket, and that's Lil Yachty. Lil Yachty has had mad layers and just keeps transforming and morphing. On a, a little smaller scale, but still big. Big enough to just have his wins. But those little wins I add up. To Poland. There you go, <laughs> right? And so look at my look at look 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 at my era. Lil Wayne. From hot boy to crazy mixtape era. Right? So, you know, the same is gonna happen, bro. You just gotta be able to see it. You gotta see that, like, yo, the, the start is kind of crazy. I mean, but as time goes and you educate yourself more and more, you start learning technology more and more, you start finding that small little pocket, it's going to keep growing. Like, this is going to etch out a big spot in the pocket because now instead of just people talking about the same thing all the time about how, oh, artists don't support artists, and da -da -da, now you're coming up with someone challenging people, giving some people some information. So now it's like, did you or did you not do something based off of that? And it's just a chain effect. It's like, okay, this person did something. Now they're reaching out to you, and then your ideas start flowing because now you're introducing a new energy towards you. Start introducing some new energies towards you. Don't always make that energy the requested energy of the same mistake people make, which is people are not paying on time. People don't want to show up on time. People want to da-da-da-da. Okay, you know what? We know people do that. But what do people do good? What's the one thing people do good? Focus on that one thing people do good. And you know what? Hone in on that. And that's what artists need to do. Focus on that one thing. Things will probably, all those other things will probably get fixed. And I've never thought about it that way. It's I hard to think about, about it like that way. Because when you're young and you're going through the motions, all you know is the emotions of going through it. And then when you get older, a person who went through it could tell you, like, yeah, I went through that. So it gets easier. You know what I mean? But with a lot of people, you're not able to connect with them because they never went through it. Most kids your age are still playing video games. So a lot of kids your age have a masturbation problem. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> like a porn problem, like porn addiction. Oh God, you know what I mean? Bro. Weed addiction. Oh you know what I'm saying? So before they oh even God. get to being responsible, they got to stop beating their meat to get out the crib <laughs> on time. You get me? So like Yo. you're asking a lot bro. of like a 21 year old. Oh God, bro. no. I you know what I mean? So I had to shift. I had to shift the energy a little bit because no one else is gonna do it. Everyone else is gonna continue to be like, yeah, the problem, the problem, the problem, the problem, the problem, the problem. No, the problem is you're great. You got great ideas, right? This is Thank a great you. energy here. Thank you. But 
y'all are like scratching the surface and don't know, and y'all need to open up the next layer, then the next layer, then the next layer. Like I said, like it depends on how you want to view it. You could view it religious as the 12 disciples, but at the end of it, bro, you're not going to be left with 12 disciples. There's going to be a Lucifer in there. There's going to be shit's going to happen. I told you, bro, you're 21 now, bro. I'm not putting this into your life. I'm not speaking this into existence, but you might talk to a girl. She might not be here when you're 31. Yeah. You might have a job. That you look back and you like it was never important. You're gonna start prioritizing what you can focus different. on by the yeah. time you're 31. When you're 31, you're gonna focus on the things you can control and let go of the things you can't control. And you're gonna learn what you can and can't control in your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And a lot of this shit, bro, like internal fact, uh, external factors, bro, you can't control, bro. Oh God, you can't oh control God. other people. Bro. You gotta just make the best of it. That's why you gotta know yourself. You gotta just make the best. You gotta of know it. yourself. How you going to know what to make the best of if you don't know yourself? Got to oh know God. yourself. Bro, and having self-love and just, like, finding yourself as, um, like, a person in general. When I was younger, I, like, never got that shit. I never got that shit. And then I thought I got it. And then I realized, again, I still didn't understand that shit. You're always finding yourself. Like, I'm still finding myself. But I feel like, I like, the, over the past year, year and a half, ever since we got this place, I, like, really have, like, been able to find myself, especially these past couple months. And it's, like, people don't. I, the same way I'm saying I didn't understand it and I still don't understand it like people don't focus on that enough like people think it's just chit chat but it's like bro that can is I, so important can I tell you something crazy what I was a great English student so do you know meat paragraphs main I remember topic, what they are but I yeah main topic evidence analysis and thesis yep. it all ties back together remember what I started off with manhood developmental stages manhood is a never ending process because oh if you a man, you're going to be a man. If you don't identify as a man, you're not a man. Okay. If you a man, you a man. There's different stuff. There's manhood. There's womanhood. Whatever you identify with, there's a process in that. You identify as a man, there's manhood for you. Right? And in yeah. manhood, it's never going to stop. I know 80-year-olds who tell me different truths every day. Young blood, I got a new truth. This is what I'm thinking. Yo, da, 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 da. I'm like, damn, you get blown away every day. You hear some different stories. You're like, damn. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I be around people who's married, old heads, 60, 70, about to retire at work, just giving me mm -hmm. game. Like, yo, I'm going to give you, I don't even want to give this piece. See, one thing I learned, you got to keep a few gems to yourself. You can't give all the gems out. Yeah, but I'm going to give you a right small right. gem, though. I'm going to leave you with a crazy gem. It's going to blow your mind, bro. How you feel about How you feel about gas prices right now? I drive, I drive for work. You drive for work, <laughs> I right? drive, I deliver. There was a gas crisis back in the 70s. This is my OG at work. Cool, cool old dad, cool white dude. It's my man. Good dude, bro. Good dude, bro. Solid dude, bro. On dogs, I won't lie to you, bro. He was like, um, he was telling me, he was like, yo, you might be too young to, 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 to be around for this time, but there was a gas crisis in the 70s. And my dad... You know what I'm saying? I took the whip or whatever. My dad, I think he was like 13 years old, bro, driving, bro. True story, bro. On dogs, he told me, bro. He's like, yeah. Like, my dad was, like, telling me to, like, um, you know, find gas, find gas. I couldn't find gas because gas was sold out. You know what I mean? Everywhere in mass. Lines is long. Lines is long. They telling me I can't get gas. I'm limited. I'm limited. I'm limited. What? He said he drove out of town, OT. I think he said he drove somewhere like, I don't know, bro. I, I don't want to exaggerate, but it's like somewhere like Jersey, bro. And he said he drove to Jersey. And he pulls up to the dude. He's like, yo, how much gas can I get? No, no, it's not even what he said. He said, do you guys have gas? The guy looked up and said, this is a gas company, isn't it? It's a gas station, yeah. isn't it? Got all the He's like, well, how much can I buy? He's like, buy all the gas you want. Got money? He's like, yeah. yeah. He's like, all right, come on, I got you. So he's shocked. His mind is blown. He's like, yo, what do you mean? I was driving all around Mass and I couldn't get no gas. He's like, I thought it was a crisis on gas. He's like, crisis? He said, hmm, what's the price of gas over there right now? And he tells him, let's say it's 15 cents or whatever. In the 70s, I don't know. Let's say it's a dollar. He tells him. Points up at the at the sign. He says, you see the price of gas right there? He said it was like 115, let's say one 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 thirty. He said, Yeah. When the prices go up to that, you guys will have all the gas you could imagine. Sure enough, prices went up, gas crisis went away. Damn, bro. You get me? 
So life is always going to be a hustle, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's always going to be supply and demand, bro. It's always going to be how it is, bro. Price determines everything, bro. I'm saying people want it or not, bro. Your prices is too low, bro. My prices is too low, bro. I got to raise my prices, bro. Know who I am? Know who you are, bro? I know myself, bro, so I could talk crazy like this on a podcast, bro. I ain't speaking nothing but positivity, bro. Oh, God. I ain't say I was the biggest gangster in the world. I ain't say I was the biggest pussy. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm the biggest me. They can't be another me, bro. In my version of manhood, bro, I understand myself, bro. I understand where I stand on 10 toes at, bro. I understand what 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 I want to preach, bro. And as I go that route, I'm understanding that there's bigger layers to what I want to preach, what I want to kick out, bro. Because I'm learning there's more and more problems to solve, which is business, bro. I'm a businessman, bro. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, it is what it is, bro. But that was like that was like a big gem I really wanted to leave you with, bro. It's like, it's what it is, bro. I'm going to ask you for a gem right now because it's the title of this video. Yeah. Who is Drew? Like, what's your message? What do you stand for? What do you stand for? And... What do you want people to take away from this interview? And this isn't the end of it because we're going to keep yeah, going, yeah, even though yeah, we're yeah. an hour and six minutes. What time is it? Because I know you got to be at a video. It's 9 51. We'll go for another like 10, 15 minutes after uh, this because I got to go to work too. Um, uh, but like, what do you want people to take away from your music, take away from this podcast, and just in general? Like, you talk so much about just putting energy out there. Like, what do you think you stand for as a person if you could put it in the words? I'm just pro life. Live. That's really it. Everything else. Changes every day, bro. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. some days I wake up, I'll be like, damn. I want to drive to New York today. And that's just my move. Calling out of work. Psh, jumping on a bus. Jumping in a rental. Zing. I'm in the city. What it do? I'm at Junior Cheesecake. Boom. Get a cheesecake. Boom. Getting fly. I'm at Saks. Boom, 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 boom. Back on the mass pack. Zing. You know what I mean? Or some days I might wake up and I might be like, yo, you know what? I'm not eating meat for the next... Two years. I went through a vegan Be phase. Be spontaneous like that? Yeah, bro, because I just want to live. I want to explore, bro. Do I want to know don't. my truth, bro. Do you know what I mean? Don't. Yeah, like, that's who Drew is, bro. Drew's just, like, a person, bro. Like, I'm a people's person, bro. I'm for the people, bro. Like I said, it's 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 God first, bro. The people and the purpose second, bro, than me, bro. Like, that's what defines me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm big on how... I'm big on other people. I'm big on helping other people improve their quality of life, bro. I'm big on just living life, bro. I'm big on just letting the BS go, bro, and understanding that that's not important, bro. I don't even give certain things energy, bro. I'm not going to, bro, because like I said, bro, if it is what it is, that's what it is, bro. Right. That's what it is. What else do we need to do with that? Because you want to take it to that, that's you. It boils down to external factors again. That's what it is, bro. What more do we need to do from that? You get me? So, like, I I just live my life like that, bro. Like, just got to know yourself, bro. Like, real talk. Real talk. Everything else just rolls off me, bro. I'm pretty just, like, nonchalant about a lot of shit. Because, like, yeah, I discover new truths. But, like, after you educate yourself to a certain level, it becomes your truth. Like, I don't need to pick up Think and Grow Rich. I don't need to. That was a great book. Though. Because I read that book every day for a year. Like every day, I, read I would that just book reread like three it, or four reread times, it. Bro. That's what I'm trying I read to tell that you. Book like three or four times, bro. But you're still at that age though, where like you're still exploring information. I'm at that age where taking in too much information is dangerous for me, because now my mind's gonna be all around the place. So I'm like narrow focused on my purpose, right? Like narrow focus. Like, all right, this is the job I need to do. This is what I would like for myself in the next five years. I know what I like. I know what I dislike. I know where my morals stand, and I know where some of the stuff that I thought was morals and was real was just, like, hyper-masculinity, like, fake identity that people from my neighborhood just put on me. Like, yo, you ain't a real one if you don't. And, like, as I've gotten to different circles and different groups, I'm like, is that really a truth? I'm not changing my morals. I'm not changing what I stand on, but is that really a truth? Whose truth is that? And if I follow that truth, what is the collateral effect of everyone around me? Right, like my nephew, like I tell him he could be whatever he want to be. Like we grew up not messing with certain things, you know what I mean? Certain things was whatever, whatever. But that's because we was taught that. Well, my nephew is, you like that nephew? I'm asking questions. I'm exploring his mind. Well, what you like about that? Then he take me for a spin. Like damn, 
And then he thinks more about it. Make me think more about it. Like, damn, that's dope. Because you can learn from everyone, bro. I learn from a five-year-old every day, bro. I learn from everyone, bro. 80 years old, bro. Everyone, bro. But you're not, but you can't allow everyone to get your energy too. Oh God. That's the thing. You gotta have balance. I know a person who told me something like, they listen to anyone. That's what makes them so humble. That's not what makes you humble, bro. Listening to anyone is what makes you stagnant. It's what makes you not being able to grow. You get me? Yeah. I don't listen to anyone. But there's certain conversations that are safe for most people. You know what I mean? You don't go ask your homie that that's not his lane. He like to just work every day. He's a cool dude. He's a good dude. How to do business. That might not be his thing. Uh-huh. But you can ask him, how's work going? You can keep conversations where you need to keep them. I just don't think that because I may be educated in financial freedom that that gives me any room to disrespect people. Uh-huh. You get me? Definitely. So, like, I learned that. And I learned social like I learned, I learned like I learned like social etiquette, like how to educate someone without offending them, right? Like, okay, this person is asking me a question. They obviously admire me for that. They're seeking knowledge from me for that. They think I'm an expert in that. How do I give them the best plan for them that they resonate with? You know what I mean? The age teaches you that, and you're gonna get there. And when you get there, that's the key to knowing your audience. Like, so that's in the business realm. People got to know that the artist has to know that in the music realm. If the artist knows that in the music realm, you could do a lot for them in the business realm because you know your audience in the business realm. You know, okay, this is an exec. I know what he wants out of this situation. This is the A&Rs over here. I know how to submit music to them. This is what the press kit looks like. I know what he needs to do to beef up his press kit and his presentation to pitch him to do that, that tour. Okay, this is a tour guy over here, a booking agent over here. I know what's going to be favoritism to him, for him to book an artist. Okay, I know this person's manager, and you could start connecting the dots. So everyone in the room has to know their audience. That goes for all facets of life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's deep, bro. There's, there's just mad layers to life that I'm learning, bro. Like, and I be humble, bro. Like, I just be wanting to just tell that, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? So anyone who be wanting to listen, bro, I just be wanting to tell that because I be like, yo, bro, when I was coming up, bro, it was mad hard, bro. There was no podcast, bro. So when I got swept under and my peers started doing great in music, I have no podcast to turn to. I ain't have no, I had to open a book. And then now it's like, it's so easy because you don't even have to read. You could just find a good channel that promotes something really dope and just lock in with them. Subscribe. And every time they drop content, lock in. And then maybe a book or two you see they tell you to read, hop read. on that and you can slow grind it out and surpass me. Because you're not going through the old process where you have to sit in the library, yeah. take notes, and then find a mentor. And then, no, you don't even have to do that. You could DM people. People be hungry to just run their mouth. And then you could just, you know, so it's so easier, bro, if you oh hungry, God. bro, and you want it, bro. And I'm happy. I don't want it to be harder for nobody, bro. That shit was hard, bro, coming up, bro. Like, And that's why, like, the shit that we do is dope because it's not pushing the lines of, like, giving away too much before I make it. You see a lot of people wanting to tell all the story, bro, about how this happened with they peoples and da-da-da-da, that the story seems so generic by the time they make it. Like, bro, we done heard that a thousand times, bro. We done heard your struggle a thousand times. You know what I mean? Yeah. You should have put out good music first, then went back and, you know, and that's a gem that someone taught me, bro. So, like, I'm really trying to, like, this foundation, I'm really trying to stray away from me right now, like, as far as where my journey is right now, and I'm truly trying to do the work. Why you need to know about me? We need to know about what the problem is. We're doing I'm, a part two about you, though. We're, yeah, when, I mean, when the time's right, we're going to do When the time's right, I'll definitely give you exclusives to that. We're gonna Hell do yeah, I'll definitely give you, you know what I'm saying? Because no matter how big I get or no matter how big you get, love is love. Oh, God. You get what I'm saying? And relationships, genuine relationships like this are genuine relationships. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and there's no amount of views you could put on something. There's no amount of money you could put on something. When it is what it is, it is what it is. People complicate stuff too much. People add this to add that to add this to add that to take away from the real point. I'd be crazy. Like, I'd be sitting back. I'd be like, yo, this is crazy how far this got spun from where it started. Oh, like, yo, you remember? The it's British like are coming. Bro. The British are coming. The British are coming. Yo, you know how long it took for information to travel back then, bro? My man was just telling me about that. I was thinking about that. We was driving through Concord the other day. And he was like, yo, bro. 
He's like, yo, you remember Paul Revere had to ride through all this shit, bro, to tell them that the British was coming, bro. He had to hit every tavern at the time that was the social club where information spread it. Now we in the digital era. We just send a text. It's everywhere, bro. You can put out a tweet. It's everywhere, bro. You can jump on a podcast. It's everywhere, bro. You might be in the crib chilling like this. You just go viral, bro. That's why artists just got to put it out and just be comfortable with being somebody different, bro. You know what I'm saying? You don't got to wait for someone else to be different, for you to be different. Just be different. I mean, provide a service that's needed, bro. We don't need another... Uh, K-Flock got the drill on Smash. D-Thang got the drill on Smash. Them Bronx boys got it. I'm not knocking nobody that wants to emulate that and feels like that that's what they represent by any means. But I'm just saying that there's a lot of people who killed it. We might not need more of that. But I'm not knocking anybody if that's what they want to do. I don't knock anybody's lifestyle, bro. That's what you do. That's what you do, bro. I'm not bigger than life, bro. You know what I'm saying? I am life, bro. That's what I'm about, bro. I'm not bigger than life, bro. I'm not bigger than the next man, bro. I'm humble, bro. And we definitely don't want no energy directed towards us, bro. That's like that energy. Yeah. Because we don't, we're not on that time, bro. That is what it is, bro. So let's focus on what we need to focus on. I see so many times, bro. It starts off as good, and it just ends bad because of egos, bro. It starts to turn into a shouting match. It starts to, you know what I'm saying? And um, I learned this in business class, bro. There's a name for it, bro. It's called, like, Ad Homni or something like that. Ad Homni. Okay. That's what they call it. Yeah, and that's basically, like, when people get into, like, a, a ego thing, and they start trying to tear apart each other's, you know, character. And yeah. then, and then the, um, you know, and Think and Grow Rich, it says, stay cool. In all predicaments. And there's been times, bro, I had to stay cool, bro. Coming from where I come from, bro, things could have really got crazy, yeah. bro. Crazy, bro. This podcast, I wouldn't even be here, bro. Yeah. But I had to read the room. I had to know the audience. Okay, this is where we going with this. Let me bring it back here. Let me center it. You get me? Because pride ain't going to get you nowhere in them situations where it's really real, bro. You get me? Ego is not going to get you nowhere, bro. But a casket, bro. The most people. Come on, bro. Yeah, but, beat me to it. <laughs> but a lot of people don't study the greats. People don't study King Arthur. People don't study King Solomon. People don't study um, coops, governments being overthrown. People don't really read and educate themselves and know history. Got to know the history to know where you're going. Got to know the past to know where you're going. History is the GPS to life, bro. I used to be like a little history buff, bro. PBS, bro. Y'all could tap, y'all could tap in, bro. Free general public channel, bro. You could read documentaries on insects, birds, all types of things, and get a big understanding of life. I'm pro-life, bro. That's where you're going to learn the best gems about music, bro. When you're sitting back, I don't smoke, but you hit the blunt. <laughs> Damn. Nigga, I'm watching birds today, bro. <laughs> I seen some crazy shit about birds, bro. Like, there's this crazy village. I think it's like in Tanzania and some shit like that, bro, where like every year there's like special birds and shit. And, like, and after you capture that bird, bro, like... You present it to the women and shit, and you can get the best woman of the village. Like, the best woman that they prepare, you get to get that, and then you get to be the strong man of the village, bro. And I'm like, damn, that's crazy. And my man didn't get the bird, bro. Like, he was, like, hopping the tree, ying, 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 with the, um, the bow and arrows, bro. Yeah. Bro, miss, bro. But, like, they were like, yeah, he's going to get it next year. He was kind of sad, bro. He had his head down, bro. That shit hurt my heart, bro, seeing that shit, bro. I was like, damn, he didn't get the bird, bro. So it's like... It's just different levels of success to other people. He's chasing a bird. Year round, he's working, and he's, and he's like, counting the moons and the sun. He's not going on his iPhone to count the time. He's counting the moons and the sun. That's all he knows. So 15 to him might be, like, 35. No, yeah, 15 to him, 15 to us might be, like, 35 to them. By then, they're grown, hunting, and I'm just like, damn, bro. Like, so you got to be pro-life, bro. Music is cool. But, like, I'll be deeper into just life, bro. Like, before I step in front of a microphone, I'm a man that has to live a life, bro. And I live a certain type of way, bro. And what it is is what it is, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, hyping it up and saying this and saying that is energy that's going to come right back to me, bro. So I just leave it alone, bro. I just don't even think about it, bro. I just be like, it is what it is, bro. Cause oh, God. How many times are we, is that going to be repet re repeated, bro? How many times is that going to bounce off the wall, bro? See, I could always redirect it. Nah, look at it this way, bro. Look at it this way, bro. Look at it this way, bro. Because that's growth, bro. They did that to me, bro. When I was coming up, bro, all my OGs, bro, they always redirect the room, bro. I'm up. Ah. Easy. 
Easy, brethren. Easy, 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 brethren. View it this way. You get me? So, you still growing, bro, and I'm I'm still growing too, bro. And it's okay. it's just a blessing to be here, bro. Life's constant evolution, bro. Yeah, bro. Life's and like honestly, bro, not to even not to not to cut you out because you be getting me going, bro. I just want to say thank you for bringing me out here. Thank bro. you too, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, thank bro. this. This yeah. literally, yeah. I'd say this all the time, but this no disrespect to any of the episodes is easily hands down the best podcast that is gonna go on the channel. I like, always be comfy when I be here, bro. Though. No, yeah, this, I this be is to just run my, yeah. this is great, bro. I wish he didn't have to rush because I I could go like another hour. I could probably do a three hour podcast. We don't need you. to. No, we I know we, we don't. don't. We don't need to. We he has to go to the music video. One. Yeah, we light him up with this first one. We uh, this kill first one. But yeah, light them up. Before we wrap this up, there's one question that I want to ask, and you mm -hmm. can keep it brief because I know you didn't want to talk about you, but we literally didn't ask about you like once. We got, yeah, time. we got we got an Um, so I don't even want. I, we, you could save any personal information. I just want to know the whole rebrand thing. Why did the rebrand come about, and what could people expect from you coming forward? Dope question. Dope question. Because there'll never be a time like this in my history again. Like, this is where we're gonna yeah, end th it. This is the dope. Right that's a very dope question. So the rebrand came about like. Like, you become a slave to who people know you as. If people know you're doing great with something, they're always going to expect you to just keep doing that. So, like, I was doing good with music. Like, i always been a great artist and stuff like that. But, like, it was always like, yo, your first mixtape, this, 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 this. And it, like, hurt me, bro. Because, like, I want to do other things. I'm hearing the new wave of music. I'm like, that's hot. And they not growing with me. So, like, that's when I learned. I was like, yo, you know what? I like this. I like where music's at. Because the people I originally started off with, they only want what I started off with, which is why J. Cole's talented creator, great artist, his people he started off with, who was 18 at the time, are now 29. You get me? So he just stayed who he was through that whole time, and they just stayed with him, right? Me, when I was coming out now, when I'm coming out now doing the music, I'm realizing that, like, there's a new 21-year-old every year. So, like, who I was... It's not going to work for what's now. And, like, I just know, like, I like what's going on now. I feel a part of it, too. There's, there's layers of what's going on now that could benefit me. Not all of it is what I represent, but some of it. So that was a big thing. And, like, when I tell you about change and growth, you can't be that stubborn dude that's like, yo, lyrics and bars and this and this and this. Nah, there's a way to, you know what I mean, fuck them up with the lyrics on the low. You know what I mean? There's a way to, okay, that's how the young boy, all right, let me, bop, 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 bop. But you got to be talented to do that. I naturally love music. I'm naturally talented to do it. That's why at times you be hearing my shit, you be like, yo, it sound better than what's on the radio. But that's just a natural skill. You get what I'm saying? I only do music because I'm just, I love it. It's the only reason I do music. Other than that, bro, I will go be a doctor, bro. I'll go do something different, bro. I could do anything I put my mind to, bro. And that's my fault. That's my biggest fault. And that's your biggest fault. That's that's like our biggest fault. That's what we have in common, bro. What's your sign, bro? Taurus. Oh, yeah, Taurus. What are you? Scorpio. Ah, uh, bro. All I was saying this the other day. All my closest people in my life and the people that I see most eye to eye do are Scorpios. And we get along the most, but we also see completely different the most. Because you're, you're bullheaded. You're yeah. strong-minded. Yeah. You're not letting up. And I'm not letting up. Yeah. And once I feel you're wrong. sting a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> gonna, <laughs> I just don't try to tell you. Once I feel wrong, yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. yeah, bro. Frequency, bro. Energy's bro. a real thing, bro. It's just many moons, bro. Like like I said, I just didn't want to be a slave to like that idea of what I once yeah. was. Like, I can't grow. Why every day I'm being reminded of how ill I once was or how ill I am? Like, nah, bro. Like, that's dope. I appreciate all y'all for saying that. I love that. But, but it's in the past. Not just that. You could be the illest dude on your block. What about New Mexico? What about Arizona? What about you might not be ill there? They might be looking at you like, and you might be looking at them like, yo, you lame. And they looking at you like. So as I travel more and more, I just realize, like, how to take a little bit from everything, mesh it all together, and just be really dope. And really be like, all right, from here, we're going to keep growing, but I like where I'm starting at. So let's just do something that makes sense. Drew BC3. It makes sense. Let's start from here. A new beginning. And let's just bring in a new energy, a new wave, a new idea, and, and just fuck it up. Like, I see there's a new need for something. I'm going to slide right into that spot. You hear all my new music. It, it don't sound like nothing anyone else is doing. Okay. I love the energy that I'm that I'm vibrating off, and I'm going to just ride that wave. You know what I'm saying? Why? Why I can't be reborn again? You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. And a lot of religions, people are reborn again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, 
a lot of religions or a lot of cultures, bro, people reborn themselves again, bro. They come back reincarnated, bro, in this lifetime, bro. And they believe coming back reincarnated in the next lifetime, bro. So I see a lot of different shit from different cultures, and I felt like that was something that I needed to do. It was just, uh, an awakening for me, bro. I'm like, damn, my man say he changed his name. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, damn. I started thinking about a lot of my problems, and a lot of my problems came from an identity that I built up to be so real. And, da -da 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 -da. and I'm not trying to downplay myself, but some of the layers of the things that I was moving off of that other people thought were ill, as I got into different circles and different um, cultures, I didn't think they were that ill anymore. It was ill how I went about it. You know what I mean? Like, damn, I... But you outgrew it. I outgrew it. That's a fact, bro. You get a lot around a lot, around a lot of coaches, bro. You get around a lot of people, bro. You realize, damn, this mad different ill shit. People be into some ill shit, bro. You know what I mean? You got kids on um YouTube doing reviews on toys, blowing up. Ill shit. Different. Different times. You know what I mean? Might not be for me. Might not be for my nephew. But it's for somebody. But it's There's for always somebody. something for anybody. There's always something for anybody. Yeah, bro. Always. Bro. You know what I mean? Some kids want to paint their hair purple. That's just what it is, bro. Looking like a deal deal <laughs> studio, deal, bro. Deal. You know what I mean? Looking like a lava lamp, bro. <laughs> oh, it is God. what it is, bro. It's just different folks, bro. Why can't we agree to disagree or meet in the middle? And I respect that. That's your idea. It ain't my idea, but that's you, bro. Yeah. Do you. Because that's that. So why I'm going to take it there? Because you have a different. That's yeah. that, bro. You got your own idea, dope. Give you a pound, yo. Keep it moving. Oh God, that's dope. That's your style. I got my own style. You don't gotta be my style. I'm not, I'm, bro. I'm not here to please everyone, bro. I'm not gonna please everyone, bro. Not everyone's gonna like me, bro. Someone's gonna find something negative to say about me. That's okay, bro. I heard that outside of music, bro. I heard that just from dealing with girls, bro. That's the problem, with people. They never been rejected. You got this. You got again. I'm not knocking. What's new, but a lot of things that are new is like people be in the same room as a girl, and instead of talking to them, they're texting them. Bro, talk to her. I mean, she a little cutie. I mean, push up on that. Yeah. See where you can go with it. Give the gab. If you fail this time, you know, learn your Got lesson. It next time. Get it next time. Tell go on YouTube. Part of life. How to talk to sure. girls. I mean, YouTube. Don't get all frustrated to a point where you, ah, fuck that bitch. Nah. She's bad and you know it. You just couldn't get it. You wasn't on point. Oh, you failed to prepare. Holla at me. I'll get you right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, she said, what? She, 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 hey, at least she told you no. You know what I mean? A baddie got to tell me no, bro. I come from that era, bro. Well, like, you know, I watch a lot of people assume, I don't know, she might not be. I, she got to tell me no. You understand? I'm different, bro. She's telling me no today. That's it. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to ask her. Yo, what's good? What you want? Oh, no. Okay, okay. We, we, we about to go. You know what I mean? That's my wave. That's what I'm into. You know what I mean? Just, you know, just different shit, bro. I'm hungry, bro. You got to just want it, bro. You know what I mean? Ooh, bro. This has been a great episode. Yeah, bro. Like I said, we could go longer. But wait, this is definitely going to be... One of the first ones when I do a part two, you are coming back up. Yeah. If we get any views, bro, up. I don't know. People might not want to hear me, bro. Uh, I just be will. talking, bro. People will. People yeah. will. Whoever does listen, you better fucking pay attention because this shit was extremely more informative than any other fucking podcast we have done. Yeah, I want to thank the cameraman, by the way. Hey, you know what I mean? He's, here. he's extending He's extending the love. He got to go. Hey, I want to thank you for bringing me yeah. out. Hey. I want to thank D.O.D. for thank you know you, everything, dog. bro. Thank you, dog. I'm comfy, bro. And if y'all, oh shit! Oh, I just want to say one more thing. Even if I became famous, I don't think I really would be comfortable around people because I'm so introverted. Yeah. So like the too. element you got me in, they might see me in future interviews and be like, "Yo, he don't even talk, bro. Like, what's that about, bro?" Bro. So I just want to throw that out there. You know what I mean? No, it was a genuine vibe, bro. The first night, camera know this, and Ryan, you know this. The first night he came here, bro, we had the session. He was cool, and then literally, I remember we sat here and talked for like. Two hours, bro, just about the music industry. And I was like, dude, this motherfucker is just a person, like a, a good ass person. Like, yeah, God, you, you got passion, bro. You filled with passion, bro. Everybody. And if you're wondering why, because this is the first podcast, literally, I asked him one question about his music. You, you, you just gather the knowledge throughout all of this. You could find out who he is through his music and through this conversation, obviously. But in due time, the story will be told. Story will be told. You got anything else? Anyone you want to shout out? Anything you want to say real quick? Nah, I just I really want to thank y'all. You know what I'm thank saying? You, I'm just dog. blessed to be here. I thank God. 
You know what I'm saying? It's just a good moment in time, bro. It's just music, energy, bro. It's a good time, bro. I just want to thank y'all, really. That's it, bro. Thank you, dog. Thank you. And thank you, anybody watching. Use that code PERP15, especially if you watch this whole hour and a half video. You better go cop some merch and get that discount. Uh, but, yeah, use that discount code. Like and subscribe. Check out Drew's music. Check him out on Instagram. I'm going to put the links to all of that shit in the description, so click there if you want to find it there. But be on the lookout. This rebrand about to be fire as fuck, man. It's music valid as fuck. Just end it there. Cue the music. It's a nine to five, but I'm on nine and it's a dead end. If you don't let it dead out, you just might let death in. If you don't know I'm dead ass, you don't know what bread is. He said he a step and he gon' show.